Hey guys, it's Alex from Board Game Co, and welcome to another episode of Play This, Not That. In Play This, Not That, if you're new here, I pick two games that have some degree of similarity, something I'm comparing, some aspect about them, and then I tell you which one I think should be in your collection. Now, it does not mean that the other one's a bad game, not by any means. In general, I only play games that are well-rated, so it usually just means that one is slightly better, or at least in my opinion. Now, in today's episode, what we're, what we're picking is we are picking Coffee Roaster as well as Nemo's War 2nd Edition. Now these two games have a little bit less in common than you might think on the surface level, but we'll get into why I'm comparing them, what it is about them, and why today's episode of Play This Not That is actually a little bit different than our usual, than my usual, you know, pitch about what it is about games. Now, Coffee Roaster and Nemo's War really have only one thing in common, or two things, which is why I'm going into this. The first is they are both solo games. These are not games that have a cooperative mode. I think Nemo's War might have a cooperative mode, if I recall the rulebook, but it's really, both these are really designed as solo games. They're not cooperative games that could be solo or could be not. They are, for the most part, solo games. The second thing, and the thing I'm focusing on for this episode, for this contrast, is that they are both, they both have different forms of luck going on in the game. Now, these are both games I have played recently. These are not games that have been in my collection a long time. In fact, Nemo's War, I have only played half a game, which is very unusual for my episodes of, episodes of Should You Play This or Should Play This, Not That. Because in Play This, Not That, I usually like to have a little bit more information about the game before I go into it. So why am I picking these two games? What is it about these games that's going on here? Now, let's go a quick overview of both games, and then I'll come into the, the comparison, and then my vote as to which of these games you should have in your collection, and why. Now, Nemo's War is a game where you are Captain Nemo. You are patrolling the, the seventh seas, or whatever it is, I don't know, seventh, whatever, you're patrolling the ocean with your little Nautilus, a giant Nautilus, and you're going around trying to do different things that will give you victory points. The game starts with you drawing a motive card. The motive card helps... Uh, it gives you variable scoring in terms of whether you'll score more for fighting, whether you'll score more for exploration, for wonders, for different aspects of the gameplay. Meaning you'll score either way, but the motive gives you a modifier to how you score. From there, you basically take each round by drawing a card that gives you some sort of test, some sort of fail, some sort of opportunity to do something or some sort of motive. It might stay in your area, it might be resolved right away, and then from there you roll two dice which determines where you put out various other ships, as well as how many actions you have. The difference between the two dice, maybe you roll a six and a four, the difference, two, is the number of actions you have that round. With those actions you have a variety of things you can do. You can search, you can attack ships in the various area. There's warships, there's regular, regular ships that are just, you know, merchant ships or whatnot that don't fight back. Then there's, you know, there's inciting rebellion. There's all these different options. There's searching for treasure. There's these different options you can take with the actions you get that are the differential of those two dice you rolled. From there, each of those actions usually require, requires a die roll. If you're searching for treasure, you roll a die. If you're fighting a warship, you roll a die. If you're, if you are Fighting a well, if you're fighting a warship, you roll a die twice once for it attacking you, once for it attack, you attacking it. If you're fighting a regular merchant ship, you roll a die one. If you're inciting a revolt, you roll a die. If you're in adding new crew, you roll a die. You're generally rolling dice for your various actions, but you can modify those dice with various opportunities. You have Nemo, you have the crew, and I believe you have the ship, uh, the hull or something. Each of those three things can be wagered, so to speak, on the results of these tests you are taking. So you move the thing along the board, you wager whether you are taking that action and you add a modifier. So now you're rolling a die with a plus three modifier. The good news is that makes it more likely you'll succeed. The bad news is that if you fail, you lose that modifier. You have to, you, you can, you can try again with another modifier. It's a track that moves along, but you'll, each time you are adding to your ability to succeed, you are also potentially hurting your survivability in the game itself. And then from there at the end of the game, you keep going doing this round and round until the deck of cards runs out. And then after that, you add up your score and see how well you did. Now, Coffee Roaster is a very different game, but also degrees of luck and just seeing how your score goes out throughout the game. In Coffee Roaster, you're trying to brew the optimal coffee. You do that over three rounds. You have three opportunities to brew the ideal coffee. You score after each round, and then you sum up your score for the end of the game. Now, in Coffee Roaster, what you're doing is you have a bag full of various tokens, mostly coffee beans, but various ability tokens. You draw things from the bag. You, when you roast those beans that you get out, and you can use the various tokens you got from the bag, the ability tokens, to do certain things that will give you more opportunity, more bag management, more hand management, more, more scoring management. 
and then you move the temperature gauge and rinse and repeat. And you're constantly trying to take these beans that mostly start off at a roasting level of zero, and you're slowly escalating the level of the bag, but if you do it too much, you may end up burning some beans. So you have to use these abilities throughout the game to try to modify how the various tokens will be pulled out or what you do with those tokens. And then at the end, when you're finally ready, you say, I'm ready to brew that cup of coffee, and you start drawing tokens in the bag, putting them into a cup, and you have certain objectives you're trying to score. You're trying to score for certain amounts of flavor in your coffee, you're trying to score for a certain brew level. Are the beans lighter? Are they hot, uh, heavier? There's different opportunities. There's a consistency. If you want to regularly score for multiple beans of the same temperature level because it adds more consistency to coffee and you're graded on each of these attributes. Now both Nemo's War and, ca and Coffee Roaster have a decent degree of luck going on. Nemo's War is it, it, there's a lot of luck in terms of, I mean, most of it comes down to rolling dice. And Coffee Roaster, in Coffee Roaster, you are constantly pulling things from the bag. And how well those things pull from the bag can drastically affect your end result. Especially when you get to that actual brewing of the coffee cup itself, ultimately you now have a bag full of, your entire, everything you've done the whole game comes down to now pulling from that bag and seeing how well you can brew a cup of coffee. Yes, there's some bag management, but ultimately it comes down to what you pull in what sequence and how that results in and how you score. So, this is Play This Not That, which game should you be playing and why? In today's episode, Coffee Roaster wins hands down. I love Coffee Roaster. This is now one of my new favorite solo games. It doesn't have the depth, the, the amount of gameplay that a game like Spirit Island, a game like Mage Knight, a game like Too Many Bones has. But in terms of the lighter games I have, in terms of comparing this to, let's say, the Oniverse series I have, this one, it has that level of simplicity, but I find it much more enjoyable. I love this game. I've only have a few plays in my belt, but I love, love, love Coffee Roaster. It is one of my new favorite solo games, at least in that lighter style of solo game you can play in like half an hour. Versus Nemo's War, I despise. I could not finish this game. I did not finish Nemo's War, and I have no interest in ever playing this game again. And I found myself thinking, why? Because Nemo's War, my main critique, came down to the luck aspect. May, it, it, everything seemed to feel like there was just a ton of luck going on. But I don't mind luck in board games. A Coffee Roaster, which I played the same day for the first time, is a game that I love. Both of these games have luck. Why do I despise Nemo's War? And despise is a, is a high word. Do not get me wrong, Nemo's War is rated over an 8 on Board Game Geek. Anything on Board Game Geek that is rated an 8, that in any way calls to you. If you are a solo gamer and you are interested in well, solo games, play Nemo's War. A solo game rated an 8 is a game that you should try if you enjoy solo games. Does Ignore my opinion here. But that being said, I, I found myself thinking, why do I hate a strong word? Why do I really thoroughly not enjoy Nemo's War? But why do I really thoroughly enjoy Coffee Roaster? Despite the fact that I'm picking the luck as the reason why I don't like Nemo's War. And then pick other games. Rum and Bones is a game I love, but you're rolling dice every three seconds. I any game you play, Spirit Island, which card are you going to draw from your deck? Mage Knight, also, like, uh, which, which monster are you going to end up fighting? There are so many games that have luck that I find myself thinking, why do I like Coffee Roaster and why do I not like Nemo's War? And to that end, I distilled it down to three aspects of luck. The type of luck, the frequency of luck, and the consequences of the luck. In terms of the type of luck, type of luck, I believe, at least for myself, perhaps for others, that di dice rolling is the least satisfying form of luck. Especially if you're rolling one dice, but for, but for sure, I mean, sorry, especially if you're rolling, yeah, especially if you're rolling one dice, but even if you're rolling two. Being a, a die roll with one die is just one to six. It's just plain and simple, you roll one to six. A die roll with multiple dice does have some degree of distribution, but it, it still ultimately comes down to rolling dice uh, Something about dice just inherently feels more random. It, it feels like that you're basically being assigned a number. As opposed to, let's say, when you draw a card from a deck, it doesn't feel, let's say, pandemic, when you pull cards from the deck and you see where the disease cubes land. It doesn't feel as random. There's still a degree of randomness, for sure, but it feels more like things happening as opposed to literally just passing a test. In Nemo's War, every time you roll dice, 
it feels like you're just attempting to pass a test. And inherently, that means you either pass or you fail. Versus in Rum and Bones, when you roll a handful of dice, when you roll a bunch of dice in Rum and Bones, if I roll six dice to attack you, and four of them hit and two of them don't, or two of them hit and four of them don't, it feels like I'm attacking you. It feels more like there's actually something happening, even though that's dice as well, but it feels more like there's something happening. The type of luck in a game is a big part of it, and you don't want the players in the game to constantly feel like they are merely being assigned a random distribution that will potentially work for them or not. When you do our card and pandemic to see which cities get hit, you don't feel like you've been assigned a random thing. Of course it's random. Inherently, you drew a card from a deck, there's, there's some degree of prediction, but some degree of randomness. Or in Coffee Roaster, when you draw things from the bag, of course there's a degree of randomness, but it doesn't feel as purely and concrete concretely as you are being assigned a modifier, take it, win, lose, banana. Number two is the frequency of the luck. The frequency of luck is a big thing. Now, a game that has one die roll the whole game would be terrible. Fortunately, Nemo's War does not have that. In Nemo's War, at least it doesn't come down to one die roll. You're frequently, frequently doing things that are luck. But it, meaning, in other words, what I mean by that is the if you, like to say Rum and Bones, where I said if you roll six dice, when you roll six dice, you're rolling six dice. Some will hit, some won't. You're constantly rolling dice to attack again and again and again. The problem is, when I say frequency, I enjoy, to a certain degree, having luck in games balance out, especially if you're rolling dice, I want it to be modified over multiple rounds of play. But in Nemo's War, it's not, so, it's not that you're rolling dice every round. That I don't mind. It's that in within a round, there are so many aspects to the luck you have. There's which card are you going to draw? Is it going to be a good card? Is it going to be a bad card? Is it going to hurt you? Are you able to pass it? Pure luck. The degree to which you are able to deal with that card is almost a pure luck scenario. Then you roll two dice. How many actions you get? Again, pure luck. It'll average out over the course of the game, but in any individual round, that's a second luck factor. Where are the ships going to roll? Meaning, the, the dice decide where the ships go on the map, and that can be good or bad. It can overflow, it can cause you to lose. Again, a third aspect of luck before you even got to your actions. And then each individual action you take has a, has a die roll. Sometimes they have multiple die rolls. So if you get another two actions, that's five instances of luck in a single turn. In a single turn, you have cast your hand to the fates five times. That is insane to me. If you, when, in Rum and Bones, when you take a turn, you're often doing one, maybe two things that are luck based, and that game is all about the dice rolling. In Coffee Roaster, there is a degree of luck, but it's one time in the game. Every round, you draw some tokens in the bag, and then when you're brewing your coffee, you draw some tokens in the bag. So there's, there's, there is luck. Of course there's luck in these games. In Pandemic, you pull cards from the deck, but you do it at the end of the round. The rest of the time, it's determination. You determine your actions, and at the end of the round, you resign yourself to the luck of the gods or whatnot. Nemo's War has so many instances of luck on every single turn that while there is 100% strategy, do not get me wrong, there is 100% strategy in this game, but at the same time, there is also so much luck that it feels like the amount of, the, 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 the amount of decisions you are making versus engaging in luck, that balance is so mismatched for me that it mostly feels like a luck-driven scenario. I don't mind luck in games. Luck in games can be a good thing. There's lots of discussions about luck in games, how it gives you reasons to try, reasons to strive, things you can blame when you fall back on, whatever it is. But I don't mind luck in games, but I want my strategy to outweigh the luck. The amount of strategy, the amount of decisions I'm making should outweigh the amount of luck I'm engaging in. And in Nemo's War, I did not feel that was the case. I felt there's 100% strategy. I, did, I wasn't doing poorly in the game, by the way. To be clear, I was not doing poorly. I was not getting squashed. I'm not blaming a, a single game on a bad. I was doing fine. I just wasn't enjoying it. And I wasn't enjoying it because everything I did was just luck again and again and again. Versus in Coffee Roaster, I felt like I made multiple multiple decisions every single round, I draw from the bag, one instance of luck, and then I make multiple small decisions with all the abilities at the table, do I apply this flavor token here, do I use this flavor token for this, and I'd make three or four decisions, put it back in the bag, one instance of luck, three or four decisions, it was constantly a single instance of luck with three or four decisions. In Nemo's War, it felt like it was five instances of luck with two decisions, every single round, that was a constant, it just did not feel, so the, the degree of luck is the second reason why I think I don't like Nemo's War, but I do like Coffee Roaster. And finally, the third aspect, the third separation of why one versus the other is the consequences of luck. The consequences of luck in a game are a huge factor in terms of how I enjoy, where I enjoy luck and where I don't enjoy luck. In Nemo's War, 
every single time you were doing something, you had to, on a frequent basis, you needed to wager one of your stats in order to potentially win a notable fight. So you would try to do something, but then when you failed, you you would actually lose. So meaning it wasn't an issue of, whenever you were trying to engage in these luck-based scenarios, it wasn't that you were not succeeding, it was that you were actually hurting yourself. So it was a constant, Let's say Catan. When you play Catan, you roll a bunch of dice. You don't get things. Not you. Not you get hurt. You may not get things. So you may not get rewarded, but you didn't get hurt. In Rum and Bones, when I attack you, I roll six dice and I miss or miss all of them. Even I didn't hurt myself. I simply didn't hurt you. In most situations, you want the consequences of luck to be a lack of success rather than also to be a failure. You're adding. Not only did you not succeed but now you get hurt. You're adding an extra level of punishment to each of these times. So it's bad enough when you have to take a bunch of actions and you're like, well, ugh, bad roll, bad roll, I didn't get it, I didn't get it. You roll four times, take four actions, none of those times you succeed. But at least you didn't get punished. In, the, in Nemo's War, not only are you not succeeding, but you are frequently being punished. Now yes, again, you can 100% Sorry about that, drop boxes. You can 100% modify for that. You can 100% account for that by, by adding to your crew and doing different things. There's all these things you can do to make up for the badness. But at the same time, you feel like you're constantly getting punished. Not that the luck is making you not succeed, but that the luck is punishing you. Coffee Roaster, you play the entire game and not a single bad thing happens to you until you get to the end. When you are finally resolving that cup of coffee that you've been brewing, that is the one time where you may see the punishment of your luck. So the entire, even though that every single round has a degree of luck, nothing bad is happening. Yes, there's luck, but there's no consequence. You're, you're brewing your coffee, you're brewing your coffee, you get to, and finally you get to the end, and then fine, there you brew a bad cup of coffee. One time in each of the three rounds, so it's three times the game, three times the whole game, will you actually potentially have the negative consequences of that luck. So they, these are games that have luck in them, but they are providing thoroughly enjoyable experiences the entire time, and without the negative consequence of that luck. How luck engages in a game is a huge factor in whether I care about it, whether I personally like the luck, whether I find it challenging, whether I find it engaging, whether it adds to the game, takes away from the game. In today's episode of Play This Not That, which is I think one of the longest episodes of Play This Not That, I do not like Nemo's War, I highly recommend Coffee Roaster, and the reason is because not because there is luck, but because of these three aspects. The type of luck, the frequency luck, and the consequences of the luck. Hopefully I did a good job distilling my thoughts on this. This was a little bit more of a, a ramble than usual in terms of why I like one or the other, but ultimately, that's my opinion. Those are my two cents. Let me know in the comments down below. I find that actually, I love you. You guys are great at commenting on all the videos. You guys are great at engaging and giving me your feedback. I find that, interestingly enough, so far, the videos that have gotten the most pushback in terms of differences of opinion have been the Play This, Not That videos. Well, don't get me wrong, I look at a lot of people who agree with me who share my opinions, but in terms of the biggest amount of disagreements, I find come from these Play This, Not That. And I think that's natural to an extent. Inherently, in these videos, I am taking a game Game and saying it's better than another, which which draws people out. It draws out those opinions, those those aspects of no, how dare you not like Nemo's War? Nemo's War is an amazing game, and I got a lot of comments on my solo video about how I should play Nemo's War, how it's a great game, and I already owned it, so I finally pulled it out because of all those comments. I engaged because of those comments. I finally pulled it off, read the rules, sat down, played it. And then Coffee Roaster, I just found so, so much better. So in today's episode of Play This Not That, it is Coffee Roaster. Let me know in the comments down below which ones you've played, which ones you've liked, why am I wrong, how many more plays should I be giving of Nemo's War? I will not be playing it again, unfortunately. And whether you like Coffee Roaster, how was Coffee Roaster? Did you enjoy it? Did you not enjoy it? Let me know down below and you can subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, watch another video, all that good stuff. Until next time, I'm Alex and have a good one.